The vast number of castles dotted across the Irish countryside make for a majestic sight to say the least. With many of them dating back more than a thousand years, they offer a strong reminder of Ireland's rich culture and history. Malahide Castle, just out of Dublin, is considered one of the original homes of Irish gentry. Her immaculate lawns, I'm sure, playing host to many social functions throughout the centuries. And times haven't really changed. In fact, take a closer look around and you might spot a right regal relic that looks like it's just stepped out of the history books. These hulking dogs are Irish wolfhounds. They're the tallest wolfer in the world. Not exactly the beast you'd want to find in the neighbour's backyard when you jump the fence to retrieve a stray cricket ball. The Irish wolfhound's actually one of the most ancient dog breeds that's still around in the world today. And don't be intimidated by its size. This guy's actually a gentle giant. Aren't you, Hagen? Hey? Hagen is the pride and joy of one of Ireland's most renowned wolfhound breeders, Elizabeth Murphy. She's had a love of the breed for as long as she can remember. And as for her and this big fella, well, they're the best of friends. This is Hagen Murphy. He's an Irish wolfhound, and like all Irish wolfhounds, he's got a superb temperament. He loves to be with people. Even as far back as 200 AD, uh, one of the historians wrote that Irish wolfhounds do better if they live with people, even to share in their bed with them. But he doesn't share my bed. The breed's been around for more than a thousand years. They've featured heavily in art throughout the centuries. And the reason they're called wolfhounds is because they were used in the counties to control, well, wolves. But with the invention of the shotgun back in the 1700s, they were put out of a job. So from then on, they became a symbol of prestige, owned mostly by royalty and the upper echelons of Irish society, which Betty's beginning to think is fitting company for her and the hound. So they're quite a regal dog. Is, uh, is Very that, much. Is that why you saw yourself as getting one, perhaps, something <laughs> regal about you? Or? No, but now that you've said that, I look at myself again. Actually, Betty admits her motives were a little less grandiose. They say small people always like big things, and I tend to be a bit small. And um, but it, literally, it is the temperament. Once you have known them, it's it's. Um, I have for a long time now. I I um, have lived alone, but I never think I live alone because I live with wolfhounds. If you want to see the placid temperament of the wolfhound in action, all you really need to do is watch them interacting with children, like young Zolti at play with her hound Culture. They're very gentle. This is especially noticed with elderly people or with children. You saw today now when the little girl was bringing the dog along, how the dog was seemed to be at one with her and uh, seemed to stop when she stopped or go with her and just stayed on a loose lead. There was no pulling. And uh, they seem to have an instinctive sense. Maybe culture's instinctive sense is just a little lacking, and so is his manners. Despite their obvious lack of etiquette at times, the wolfhound really is a gentle giant. I remember calling into the petrol station um, one day and I had two of them in the back of the car and one fella says to the other, if she doesn't pay, don't ask her. <laughs> now, if you ever head over to Ireland, don't expect to see a wolfhound on every corner. The truth of the matter is, they're quite rare. There's only around 500 of them left in the whole country. So even when the locals see one down the main street, they cause a bit of interest. Oh, he's a good. How pretty is he? Are you Yeah, he is, yeah. They're a lovely buck. Yeah. And it's not only people who are fascinated by the wolfhound. Even this little terrier stopped to take a look until the wolfhound made a move, and then he couldn't get out of there fast enough. The most unfortunate thing about the breed is that they don't have a long lifespan, only about eight to nine years. But Betty says they're still the only dog for her. When I lo 
lost my first Irish wolfhound. When she died, if I hadn't already had an Irish wolfhound, I would never have got another one because I couldn't have, uh, I just couldn't cope with it. But uh, if my father pointed out to me, she was only eight when she died, and he said, she had eight great years, and she gave you eight great years. And he said, you know, would you swap that for anything? And really, I wouldn't have. After taking a look at the breed, I'm sure you'll agree, it's easy to understand why so many people have fallen head over heels for the Irish wolfhound. So if you ever find yourself wandering down the street in an Irish town and come across a wolfhound, hopefully you'll know a little more about this gentle giant. Why don't you come with me to the island of Jersey in a moment and we'll 